So Jack, it's nice to get and sit down in a quiet, shady spot of the patch. And um, yeah, I, I touched on it earlier. You and I have known each other a little while now. And um, just by sort of being associated with you through business and, and <laughs> pleasure as well, I've learned so much. Um, you know, you brought so much knowledge to the table. It's almost hard to believe that one guy can hold so much <laughs> in such a young head. That's right. I when not expecting yeah. that. No, oh, mate, it's true, honestly. You know, I really admire, how, you know, what you do and, and how you've got here. Ditto, man. Yeah, so. good cheers, man. Um, how did you get here? You know, was there a moment where you were like, this is what I should do with my life? Yeah, definitely an aha moment. Back in 2013, went to Australia for like a work travel visa. Um, and I always said to myself, like I traveled a lot prior to Australia. And I always said to myself, instead of just coming back and just going back to being on site, being an electrician, like let me experience enough things that made me feel like I'm going to find something that I want to do for the rest of my life. Now, I didn't think it would be this. Yeah. No way, no way would it be farming. But um, to extend your visa to live in Australia longer, you have to do agricultural work, 88 days to be exact. Um, I think they've scrapped that now, but which is a shame because it was a great experience. But I was just right place, right time, right person come into my life. And a guy come into the hostel and was like, I need a few guys to help me chop down some lantana that was like an invasive weed and just help me clear up the farm and just give me a general hand. So we approached him um, and he, he agreed to sign us off if we continuously went back or just was like, yeah, crack on. But, uh, huh? And that was that. It was, yeah, it was that, but it was like the minute I got on the farm, I realized it wasn't, I'd never been on like be like a, a proper farm, like a homestead, but it was like, you realize he was just doing something different. Like all the animals were free roaming. Um, it, the, the abundance was ridiculous, but he had like a, a, a hydroponic system that was gravity fed, like IBC tanks like yeah, yeah. flipped. And then everything was run off gravity and he had like a tank full of tilapia fish. And I was like, what is this madness? It's absolutely, <laughs> but I loved it. It was like very like bonkers science, but with mm. the farming aspect, growing a lot of food. Then it was just the first farm lunch is like where it all changed for me. So we was cracking away in the forest and he was like, come in, but, but before we go in for lunch, let's pick some stuff from the garden. Let's go cook it. And it was really try cooking that food, seeing like um, like the eggs crack into a pan and it was a luminous orange, um, seeing like the, the smells and the aromas from the herbs and, and cutting that veg. And then he, we cut a tomato and we ate it. And I was like, oh my God, why does that taste so different? It was, mm. it was like, that's what it should taste like. And I was like, what? So I realized I was robbed 23 years of my life to see <laughs> benign food. Like a proper city slicker. Yeah, that, well, like I was coming from a building site eating like calf food, like every day <laughs> to like being like really spoiled to like the top pinnacle of like farm fresh homestead, good quality soil food. And it just like light bulb moment of like, wow, this is, I want to eat like this all the time. Yeah. And then continuously working on the farm, gaining experience, like picking his brain at lunchtime. And then I remember like I was shoveling manure in it and it was <laughs> like, shoveling shit. It, it was hot, it was hot as today. Like it was like ridiculous temperatures. And I'd so, I was just like whistling along with a wheelbarrow full of poo. And there's just the sounds of the, the Australian forest, like the woodland in the background, it was just, Kind of peaceful but perfect mm. and i just made this snap decision in my head it was like a choice of like ah, oh, this is what you want to do for the rest of your life like it was like a joyful moment of realization of like this is the yeah. truth this I, is what I we think, should be doing you know like you kind of said it without saying it i'm a great believer in be a yes man you never know where things might lead you know yeah was, you said yes to chopping down that stuff and, yeah yeah and before you know it was there and also you know when you're on your journey be open to knowledge, you know, expect to learn something every day. Yeah. And that, that mentality will serve you right. A hundred percent. And that's something I've learned as a got older, being like a notoriously shy kid to being like booking trips like last minute to, mm. to get on a plane and be like the other side of the world. Like yeah. that, those spontaneous moments put you in situations that you can't believe or you can't see how you can get around it, but it just works. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was on that farm in Australia, very inspired. He told us about organic food, made our shopping experience different. I was always picking up organic. I was, I was going to the farmer's market. I'd work for free for food because I was understanding what good food was and like the toil that went into like the hard work that went into that good food and why there's think, a price difference. I think that's one of the biggest issues with, with you know, our current culture is that 
generally you have no appreciation of the blood, sweat and tears that's gone into, a, into, into food. You know, we, the classic example is something like um, British milk farmers um, being forced down on price, can't, can't put the prices up for stuff. And it's because, you know, they, they graft and they, they give blood, sweat and tears. And, and there needs to be more of a, an understanding of, of food origin. Yeah, I, like growing food should be learning school. Mm. Um, because people realize like, where it comes from and then like, why is that a little bit more expensive? But like, we're, I feel like there's like a big fight against food at the minute, like food shortages and all this. Don't want to go political, but I believe that people should be, have the basic knowledge to grow in their back garden, uh, heal their families with like good food, understand good food. It brings us together. Like yeah, when you're around a table with good food, it's like, I think it's everything. Camp, like around the fire, we ate earlier, like cooked mushrooms that are like grown in the container chucked in a bit of like rocket herbs that are grown on the farm and it's like that instant i think something that's um you know we're going all over the place me and all sorts of cool people and something that keeps cropping up is community um not only human community ecological community um it's just such an important part of what you do and by getting your hands in the ground and and uh, partaking in growing food you know it just leads to a, the wider web of, yeah. of like you know it's, it's funny because i've probably got more closer mates through building this like since i built this i've like, like met you and like loads of other people that are into this and like our conversation straight away are like very geeky about this sort of <laughs> stuff but like then we're like our new cells and our old cells like we can go down the pub and have a few beers and chat about life and and that's beautiful that we've like we're on a journey ourselves but we're still like you're still like going out with your mates and still having a good time and that community of like yeah just wanting a better life this it should be the baseline for everything there's it's a lot of stress life. yeah there's a lot of stresses in the world and i feel like this centers you yeah and that's not being hippie it's like just getting your hands in the dirt eating good food it's like the base of life like enjoying it with your mates yeah it's nothing better so you know the the, the main purpose of of um of this journey for, for us is, is, is to work out, you know, what does it take to start a food growing business? How can you make that step up? You know, as a guy who's been through the process, if you could know one thing then that you know now, what would it be? What's your one big tip?